Okay, this is a video here of possibly the worst um, kind of foundation, <laughs> kind of experiment to scene that I've done so far, and I, you'll see what I started with in the beginning of this one. It was just kind of a, a test page for some inks on matte cardstock, okay? But this matte cardstock really yielded some good results. But during the way, it was kind of, uh, it was pretty rough in terms of uh, kind of what I ran into with certain inks of certain viscosities, okay? It's not an indictment of uh, any of those brands that I've used. But um, anyways, I don't show that process, but I talk about it. And I'll show you how to kind of resurrect your pieces and kind of the concept behind it all in the resurrection of, uh, I don't know, something seemingly lost and just, you know, exactly what you can do. But... I don't know, I really like this look right here. This, um, these trees down here are stamped in a VersaFine, so they still look really, you know, quite wet and, uh, uh, you know, shimmery, glossy in here. But kind of it kind of occurred to me, as I mentioned in the back of the video, it's these trees could be stamped in uh, something like a, you know, or embossed or something like that, or done in foil or done in white embossing powder, and I think it would look really cool against that background. But anyways, how to save your pieces and uh, what you can do. Now, this one just happens to be a star in space, but the concepts would apply to, you know, all kinds of other different types of terrains and whatnot that you might want to be doing, so... Uh, anyways, pretty fun scene to uh, to work on. Uh, I wasn't quite sure where this one was going to go or if it was really repairable at all in terms of a finished piece, but I don't know. I, I believed in the concept that I've been talking about, but I think it yielded some pretty nice results, and I'm pretty happy with that matte paper and just how much depth we can achieve. Um, but, you know, kind of tweaking around the, uh, the color schemes and brands of inks a little bit. Um, to achieve that. So anyways, if you watch the video, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, this is a piece that was an experiment, okay? This is a piece of matte cardstock, okay? And it's, I think it's this one called Appleton Papers or whatnot. But it's a 80 pound matte cardstock and I use this card, cardstock has a, a clay coating on it. And I'm not sure if it's a single sided coating or if it's a double sided coating or if I possibly stamp this out on the non-coated side, so I just don't remember. It could be double-sided, I'm not quite, really quite sure, but um, inks with that have kind of a thicker consistency to them, and I'll oftentimes a lot of them do. Um, this one, in this combination, really kind of spread out. You can see all of my impressions are... Now, I used a lot of ink over this, but the impressions themselves are a little bit muddy. And when we talk about kind of a, a stamp like this design right here with a lot of detailed um, dots and uh, really fine types of um, gradations of tone within it, if you take every little tiny dot and you kind of spread them out a little bit, it will fill in a lot of the, you know, the finer details here. All right, so I've been talking about taking um, different scraps of paper. My last scene was this one right here. This one just had four green trees stamped in the background. It was just kind of a test print um, piece for um, some re-inking of a, uh, or not a re-inking, the inking of a blank pad, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a thinner style of ink, okay, which is, um, it's the same dye-based inks, but they just have, from brand to brand, you, get, you run into different viscosities. All right, now this is really hard set in terms of my composition here. My color scheme's already said I was just layering down tons and tons of ink over the top of this just to see where it would go. And everything kind of just blurred out, okay? But let's put my, um, oh, my notion or my, I don't know, my stance on the fact that you can almost resurrect any piece, okay, be it scrap paper or whatever, you know, in some way, okay? I mean, we can't make this certain things. I'm not going to do this kind of real super bright, very light blue colored scheme or something like this, but we can make something of it, and I'm a firm believer in that in all, I don't know, pieces of paper. And I, I do this exercise because sometimes people 
say to me, oh my god, I messed up, so I gotta toss it, you know, and that's just like some kind of really minor thing, it's a color put in the wrong space and too much of it or something like that, but I always say that if you just kind of stick with something, um, you can it can really yield some really good results, okay, and scenic stamping, I mean, it's Scenic stamping is really the most forgiving form of stamping, even though some people see the end results and they think it's the most, I don't know, maybe complex and complicated. But the thing is, in what other types of stamping are you going to run into that you can just put a branch over the front of it or a tree or whatever and just block something out completely and it looks kind of in the spirit of... Um, the scene that you're doing, and that's the case with this one. So I'm just re-stamping my cloud here. See, my cloud is really kind of muddled down here, right? So I'm just going with a darker impression of it right over the top of those ones, like so. Okay, now this, Marvy inks are thinner, okay, than most other types of inks. I'm talking about the viscosity, I'm not talking about the saturation, they're deeply saturated colors, but they're just not, the binder in them just isn't as thick, so they, they're usually more of like a, a thinner water than like a, kind of a, like, you know, almost like a gel. And it's not to say that they're better, but they tend to be brighter in general, okay? There's some colors that are brighter in other lines, like one blue to the next or something like that. But these inks right here are very, very saturated and intense, okay? Now, I use all kinds of brands. I have Printworks, Vivid, Adirondacks, Adirondack Light, Seabrights. Oh, boy. I don't know what other types I have. I don't know. Maybe that was it. I have, you know, a couple straggler ones of uh, other brands, but just in general. Okay, so we have our um, sky here with our clouds. It still looks kind of ugly. That's not it, you know. I'm not just doing that. But um, let's go back with some of the uh, cloud star cluster, sorry. And let's stamp this in here. Now, this thing is going to get quite a bit darker just by the very nature of me stamping it darker. All right, so it's changing the, changing the spirit of the piece from my initial kind of test impressions. Okay. All right. So star cluster is just kind of running in there. It reads more as just kind of like a general texture than anything right now. All right, so we have something like that. No masking uh, required or needed in this case, in this scene. Sometimes you need to mask something, you know, if you have like a cabin with a roof and you want to stamp a tree behind it, then you just have to mask off that roof or something like that. But by and large, you just don't have to do any masking. In this form of stamping, it's just, it's a very kind of simplified um, way to uh, utilize um, stamps. Okay, so let's go with some pink up in the uh, sky. Let's go, let's kind of increase the intensity in some areas here. And we'll go for kind of a, a really, oh, I don't know, layered, I guess, um, scenario. Now, this isn't going to look quite as intense as using a glossy piece of paper, just from the very nature that um, matte tends to be more absorbent because you just don't have that extra layer of, um, of uh, coating on the surface of the paper. So it's going to absorb your media. The feel is a little bit different, you know, when applying your inks. 
but not so much different. It's not as different as as I would think it would be. But what I have to do is I have to kind of establish kind of a base coat first. It, it looks a little bit blotchy, or, or very blotchy. But the thing is, is that I keep kind of staying with it, and the paper itself kind of starts to achieve um, a super saturation of ink. And when that pulp of the paper gets really saturated, what happens is um, the ink starts to be a little bit more surface oriented as I apply more and more of it because the pulp isn't absorbing it, you know. So um, when that happens, it really allows me to spread the inks out really easy, e you know, evenly and nicely and kind of effortlessly. But until I get there, you know, it's a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say I'm fighting with it, but it just kind of the process is kind of taking a little while. And one of the things I've been showing too recently, if you don't have one of these sponge tips, I'm just kind of on my base layer because I'm kind of restarting this all over again. But you can just go like that with a paper towel and, you know, you can just kind of rub it in there. It almost takes less time sometimes to do it this way. It's a little bit less control in terms of the placement. Like if you want to keep something light, you know, when you're doing it this way, I don't know, I find it's a little bit more reckless. But if you have a vast area to fill in, that's a pretty good way to go. I almost feel like I'm applying like shoe polish or something on this. Okay, well, look at that piece of paper bow with all that ink that I just applied. So this is really starting to bend like this. It's starting to go like that, curl up like that. Okay, let me counter bend it. And let's see if that works. All right, I know one color that I need to... I think my... Vi no, my violet pad looks pretty good. I thought this one was one of those that kind of was... You know, the fabric was kind of disintegrating. Okay, let me go a little bit darker around the perimeter with this one. I'm using my very expensive applicator here. I'm joking. Okay. But see, that super saturation now, it really allows me to really build that up like so. or not build it up, it allows me to spread it out really evenly. So again, if you have just this, something like this, kind of go around a bit on the perimeter. I, I don't think any of your scenes will ever look like this, and mine won't either, because I started with that muddy kind of real kind of mess there, you know. So we've gone from, I don't know, I, don't, I mean, I just went with that real colorful kind of uh, foundation um, coloring to, uh, I don't know, maybe that's something out in deep space or something like that. I might be stamping, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, Mars, um, you know, a thousand billion years ago or something like that. Who knows? Okay, so that is done there. It's getting pretty vi vibrant though, right? And deep in terms of that saturation. It's completely different though, isn't it? All right. Now, dare I do this with the bleed proof white up there? And yeah, I've been doing this, but I don't know, just this is kind of a, an example of an extreme here. You know, an, an extreme kind of repair work done on a really far gone um, experiment or result or whatever. Okay, so this is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's a very opaque watercolor. And when I don't like something or an area, or I, you know, I can kind of push it all back into the background by putting another layer of something else in front of it, okay? Or 
you can use it to enhance what's already down there in terms of the contrast that you're producing. So with something like this, it'll give me, in theory, some really crisp light dots, okay? And that would match really nicely with a kind of a more diffused, darker foundation there, okay? So you're playing these contrasts against one another, both in value, light and dark, and texture, crisp and very, you know, quite soft. All right, so, all right, now this is a fairly fast drying ink. It's not like permanent ink or something like that. It's, it's still water-based, but the um, Bleed Proof White is kind of designed to dry pretty fast, or just, I don't know if it's designed to do that, but um, it just does because of the kind of the chalky nature of it. Okay, let's see if we can get in here a little bit. I'm just kind of flicking my thumb back here a little bit. Let me see if I get my, my hand out of your way so you can see it. And I'm putting it over my clouds, you know. I'm seeing that now those clouds are kind of more celestial based and whatnot than um, I don't know if they're ever terrestrial, but um, kind of more Earth, you know, atmosphere, our atmosphere based or something like that. Okay. So anyways, we have this texture down here. It's a real fine, diffused texture. It's kind of interesting. It looks like a nebula to me right here now. Uh, huh, pretty cool. Okay. I think I like it this way better than this way. I've been thinking about this. Actually, that doesn't way oh, doesn't look too bad either. It looks like one of those deep space uh, um, images to me. Maybe even more than some of the ones I've been doing. Okay, so I'm trying to decide. I I don't really like that composition. I think so. Ah. Uh, Notice me counterbending it. It is really soaked. I guess it's because it's matte too, so it's really absorbent to the different, uh, the different, uh, um, or all of the the layers of uh, ink that I've applied in there. Okay, so I'm going to take this out of here because this just piece of paper is all coated with um, a fine kind of a paint spray, and the even though as small. Of those dots as they are they are kind of raised and kind of chalky so I don't want to get that all over uh, my piece on the back of it and everything like that I'd have to kind of work around it a little bit all right so that is that let's try and apply can I have to bend this around that's why I always suggest people I, I bought my papers a long time ago and um, I wish I bought the thicker style. So like a, I use 12, 10 point, um, 10 point uh, glossy card stock. I should have got uh, 12 instead. It would have been so much better. So these days, that's what I always recommend to people that are thinking about like glossy cardstock. Remember, this one's a matte, but uh, glossy cardstock. I always say, hey, for a few dollars more, just go with the uh, twelve point, especially if they're buying a ream of it. Okay, I'm adding in some larger dots here with my the use of my just plain gel white gel pen. This one's a Uniball Signo. Okay, and I happen to have one little area in here that's. Um, light still I didn't kind of tone it all out most of it I toned out uh, all of my light in here it's dark but it's lighter in some areas still but all right so adding these in here like so sometimes the best looking techniques and cards come about by kind of I wouldn't say accidents but it's kind of having to work with the accident or I don't know, experiment maybe, you know, maybe that's more, you know, kind of a failed experiment too, because it really gets you to think, you know, and have to devise some kind of plan, you know, in order to, you know, to kind of, uh, 
I don't know, save something. All right, so for me, um, quite often with the things that save things, weak areas, it might not be the scene overall, but kind of weak areas within a scene. It's the use of crisp and dull in the form of light media, okay? So I use things like gel pens and pigment ink, okay? This one happens to be Hero Hues right here. Just white pigment ink, okay? You can use whatever brand you want. Brilliance is a little bit harder to, you know, utilize because it's so um, quick drying and, I don't know, it, it's like an instant dry type of, uh, you know, for pigment ink, you know. But what I'm going for here, and I mention this every time I do this one, but um, every, anytime people you do this technique here for the first time, they're ink pads are always so juicy, you know, your white pigment ink or any kind of pigment ink pad, you know how thick they are with paint, you know, like paint. But then they add this in there and they just go straight into their scene with it, you know, you know, like this and then this, but then you get this big blob, okay? So what you're going after is kind of a much lighter dab, okay? So if I tap this out really lightly, you see that right there? I bet you can barely see it, right? But that's what you want, though. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just tapping this. Picture you're tapping it on, like, some baby's face or something like that. We wouldn't be doing that, but that's the pressure you want, okay? Imagine a baby is sleeping and you don't want to wake it up. And you have to tap something on their face or something. Imagine you're doing that, okay? So it's just really quite little... I mean, it's going to wake them up, but, you know, you want it to be nice and delicate, okay? So just think about that. Now, don't go like this one tap. Oh, my gosh, I can't say anything. So tap it hard, and then you get a blob, okay? Just stay with that same kind of consistency, okay? And then you can get that diffusion right there, and I'll show you how it applies to your piece here. Okay, now I've drawn some of these dots using the pen, and I can just kind of scribbled a, a much, you know, larger dot. Uh, th this, these pens aren't quite as opaque as I'd like them to be. They're a little bit more translucent. So where I've laid down that white, you see kind of the pink ink coming through a little bit. I guess I can reapply it and put more of it, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so just dabbing around some of these um, dots in here. Well, that one really stood out. Let me dab some of that off and make that a little bit more diffused, okay? Sometimes I dab it off a little bit with my finger to remove some ink. Okay, but see that kind of glow working in there? And just kind of keep doing this. So, okay, so let's say I have some stars in my sky in a scene. Or if I want, you know, you ever go to a lake or body of water and early in the morning and there's kind of this mist rising off the lake. If you have some lighter areas on your lake surface, then you can apply that, okay? Like here, let me just do it on the side here. See this scene right here? Let me see. <laughs> I don't know if this is working. This, this is pigment ink over pigment ink, but let's say, for example, this tree here is facing that light. So let me see if this works. I haven't done this over the Versafine before. Eh. Okay, if it starts picking up some of that black, I'm going to stop. But see that right here on the side of that tree facing the light? Okay, and same down here. This isn't my scene from my previous lesson, but look at that little, see that light coming on there now? So it's just this really faint shade of it. But hey, I get it. Everyone that does this, because I still do it too after I've done a million of these, sometimes I'm just kind of working and I think, okay, I'm gonna ink up. And I want as much ink in there as it'll hold without getting real blobby, but sometimes I still apply too much and it's just too blobby on there, okay? But like I said, you just kind of dab it with your finger or something like that, and um, it starts to remove some of that you, that you've applied. It's working a little bit differently on a matte paper. It probably kind of maybe soaks in a little bit, but you can kind of dab some of it off. It's it's a pretty forgiving process right here. It's not like applying like some kind of permanent ink over the top of it. If you apply it on glossy cardstock and you don't like it at all, you can just remove it all. On this one, right? see that little glow right there? Let's see if we can remove all of it. Yeah, not only did it remove it, but it removed the dot there, you know. So let's get that back in here. Okay. All 
All right, which side? <laughs> I can't even tell which side uh, the pigment ink was on on this Q-tip. Do you have to use Q-tip? Eh, no. But try to go with a cotton one. I've tried those kind of cheap ones, you know, like a, I don't know, whatever, 99 cent store or something like that. Those They're kind of like acrylic and they're real tightly bound. I don't know, that at the time, that's uh, one of them that I got. And, those ones, I, I can never get the tip real soft, like, you know, fraying like this. You see that? If you want something to apply soft, then you have to use a soft applicator. Does it make sense? Okay, so I am I have these, like, the, you know, like these the stars are kind of emanating from out of there. So I don't know, doesn't that look cool right there? It looks like a, I like a close-up of some kind of like a nebula, like we're looking at the, like the Orion Nebula or something, you know. These little glowing little bits, though, it kind of brings the piece alive, doesn't it? I'm kind of going extreme uh, with them. I'm going too much, but it's just so fun to do. It's hard to stop. All right, let me see if my pink pen is working here. A couple of my Uniball Signos stop. Stop working real well. Yeah, sometimes I can whack them around for a couple minutes and they start working again. Sometimes not. Well, let me try these ones right here. I have some um, the shuttle art pens, but the shuttle arts are a little bit more translucent, and we have such a dark background here. I'm not quite sure if they'll show up as extreme as I'd like, and especially on a video like this where you know I'm trying to showcase what uh, you know you have to be able to see what I'm doing on on video. So. Okay, so anyways, this is the color scheme, right? Kind of pinks, purples, right? So why not utilize that color in some detailed areas, if you have it, you know? Okay, it's kind of all utilizing the same color scheme. So we're creating kind of continuity with color and I don't know it kind of represents colored lighting it's not lighting but it's just contrast that we have in here and I mean you could go with some kind of counter colors too I mean like a green or something in there might be kind of interesting or let's try yellow in here maybe it'll stand out against the background slightly I'm not going to try to make it look you know Kind of eye popping, but just a few little specks in there like that, you know, because you see variations um, kind of in deep sky imagery, you know, that comes back from, you know, whatever uh, deep space, you know, Hubble things, um, I don't know, radio telescopes and whatnot. But anyway, okay, so we have that. And while I still have them on my uh, acrylic blocks for my use yesterday, I'm going to just use them in here. I think that looks okay as is, but I don't know. I mean, this would be a good card if we mounted on something and we did something like a quote stamp. Not stamping it directly on here, but you know, you stamp it on a different thing, cut it out, maybe mat it and put it right over that. Something that says something about the universe or uh, stars or something like that. Or if you have just someone that, you know, is into, uh, you know, star-like, you know, space imagery or something like that. Maybe their favorite color is pink, you know, you can, you know, have a happy birthday on there or something like that. But, okay, let me, I'm going to ground this, okay, with um, some trees. I've been doing way too many of these space uh, tree things, and I could do those forever because I love doing them, but um, I need to kind of break out. But in this scene right here, I think something in the foreground, something dark would look really good. All right, so, all right, let's 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 not position these, not because it wouldn't look good, but I'm just going to stamp these kind of, ver you know, um, vertical. 
as opposed to kind of doing that slanted one that I've been doing, like you're looking kind of up at space, I think. But that would look awfully good. <laughs> this is like the perfect opportunity with it, but uh, let's just go vertical, like we're looking, you know, we're on the ground, just kind of standing up, looking at, at across there. But look at that. Look how dark that tree looks now, and how... I mean, this scene looked really dark, right? But when you put something like true black right next to it, it really kind of plays against contrast, doesn't it? Okay, let's go with that. Let's go with... Uh... That mat looks pretty good, but this is, I don't know, this comes to show you how kind of multiple viscosities of ink kind of work out in our favor sometimes. So sometimes you have to think about we wouldn't think about this normally, but we're usually thinking about ink colors and ink ranges, okay? Um, I love Distress Inks. I love, you know, Memento, too. But those, I think that just different combinations of inks, using them for, you know, whatever they're really great at, works the best, right? So I don't really care about... Um, things like I'm not brand loyal I'm kind of characteristic um, interest you know interested so I'm just gonna go with the ink that serves me the best for what I'm using it for all right Marvies are really bright saturated and intense um, but sometimes I don't want an electric looking you know grass or neon grass for my cabin in the woods. It's just too bright, so I'd like to use some distress inks, you know, something a little bit more earthy and rustic looking, you know, in combination with uh, the Marvies. Maybe the Marvie gives me the intensity, but the other ones will give me some other type of uh, look that I think suits the scene, serves the scene uh, the best. So kind of play around with things. You don't need the entire range of everything, you know. I don't know. I'm, saying, I'm talking to crafters, so maybe we do need, you know, them or something like that. But uh, from a practical standpoint, it's more kind of more about, um, I don't know, uh, like I said, the characteristics. I know we like uniformity, though, too. People want all their pads kind of the same, you know, same cases and whatnot which look really cool, and I know part of uh, crafting in our, in our community, it's, you know, we like cool looking stuff, you know, in our, in our, in our work area, you know, but, uh, you know, mixing and matching is fun too. Okay, so anyways, so look how dark that is right there. That's our, our um, versifying black. All right, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that is, I mean, the background to these black trees is still, you know, really dark, right? I mean, this is what it looks like, kind of like that, but you put those over the front of it, they almost look embossed, don't they? Well, we're still using the pigment ink that you would use with embossing, but, uh, um, but look how much of a change. There's a lot of dimension in here, isn't there? It almost looks like really deep space. And you know how flat and kind of lousy that looked, <laughs> you know, before I kind of added all that stuff down there. Okay, so the weak, okay, so going back to what I was saying, the weak areas of this piece right here were, you know, were kind of a blotchy experimentation of kind of inks that kind of blended out a little bit, okay? So what we do is we, we subdue that weakness and we try to make it our strength okay well how do you do that well i just restamp the impressions okay to get a crisper impression it's hard to see that these are clouds down here but who cares right they're up there i just used more ink on it okay so that was my foundation and then what i did was i just splattered you know some dr martins over the front of it and i used some gel pens so what you do we're doing is we're creating a layer in over the top of all that and it pushes all that back in the distance okay and then what do we do again we added something that can stamp over all you know those other two layers in a thicker form and darker form in this case 
in the versifying black. Okay, now this would look kind of interesting too. Think about it as if we embossed these trees in white over the back of that. Wouldn't that look really dramatic? It would look like, you know, some sort of crystal covered, um, ice covered trees in the foreground. That would look really cool too, but that would be something that's over the top of all of those and creating another layer. So now we have three layers, but I wouldn't call that background now a weakness. I think it's a strength because you're playing these things against one another. And it's just a matter of kind of staying with the piece. I mean, that, that foundation right there was as bad as you can get, you know, in terms of just, you know, a finished piece. But when it becomes kind of just a component um, of soft, kind of muted and diffused, okay? But what's the op opposite of soft, muted, and diffused? It's crisp, defined, and um, kind of distinct. So all of these little dots are very distinct in here. So we re just all we have to do is reintroduce that element back into the scene, right? And we have kind of a full range now of crisp and soft and defined and muted and, you know, bright and I don't know if there's really dull in here, but um, uh, I guess you can say that in some of these areas where it's kind of, uh, you know, I've tapped over the top of it with a uh, top of an area with uh, some, you know, a very thin layer of uh, pigment ink, it diffuses it, right? Because it makes it more translucent. So you see a duller version of that pink right there you know, through that little dot right there. So in other words, just bring back your ranges and uh, it typically will, uh, can save a piece. Sometimes we need to save it even more, you know, so instead of like thin little trees like that, I have to use, you know, a much thicker tree or something like that to cover something up or whatnot. But it generally works. And uh, I'm telling you, just a couple little things right there with uh, gel pens and uh, pigment ink can really uh, I don't know, complete a scene, you know, and I say complete, sometimes it's complete and save a scene. And I think this one right here needed some saving if any of my scenes ever did, or any of, I don't know, it wasn't, I guess it was a scene, but it was kind of an experiment too. So anyways, you can work with just about anything. All right, so this scene right here I mean, it looks pretty good right now, but what I'll do is I'll also spray it. But it kind of looks nice like that. Maybe maybe this is one of those where I should spray it with like a matte spray or something like this. Because right now those trees in there are very glossy, right? I mean, this would be, be a good time to, you know, do some embossing on something like this too. I think that would look fantastic to actually do these kind of matte color backgrounds like that and to do a glossy... Uh, like detailed embossing powder in black. I'm just thinking out loud here, but wouldn't that look cool in terms of textures, in terms of something really shiny against, you know, a background like that in matte, just like it is here, so. Or these ones right here, you see that, how that's kind of shiny like that? You can do those glitter types of effects, you know, with those glitter things and have metallic looking trees against some kind of sort of background of that sort, so. I don't know, all kinds of ideas coming out. This is the problem with these videos. I start doing, I do one thing like this and it kind of reveals, I don't know, five other avenues to go down. So the more kind of instruction that I do in taking care of these different types of subject matters, like five other things pop out that I want to explore now. So I don't know, it's never ending, which I guess is a good thing for us as uh, stampers and that there's always something else we can be a, uh, looking into. So anyways, hope that uh, scene or whatever video lesson uh, came in handy for you. And, or I, I, It's more of the concept though, I think, you know, that I'm talking about right here in this video of uh, kind of just exploring um, some things that, uh, you know, can sometimes look like they've gone astray. And I would say this one did, but, you know, just kind of sticking with the process and the general concepts um, that you're doing and just seeing where it'll take you. And often they can yield some pretty good results like this one uh, for me. I, I don't know. I like the piece, so um, I didn't before, 
but uh, I like this right here, and it's something that I haven't seen before too, which is often the case with uh, pieces that you just have to kind of stick with and kind of see where they go. All right, if you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe.